So I have four little reminder things that will be repeating some previous content, but also some new content. So one is evaluation. So Dan sent out a bunch of them last night. I was able to do the ones from yesterday during this last little break. It does not take a lot of time. And we really would like 100% response rate, please. Uh, and he's going to send out the ones for today soon. Number the next is COVID forms. If you received an email, such as the one I received, saying we haven't received your COVID, blah, 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 blah. Please take care of that and send that. It's really important. The third thing is on the schedule, you'll see there's a special session tonight, the sort of CIA tradition, where we get together and talk about career development. And it's a really useful session. People like it a lot. So if you're able to come, please do. It should be really terrific. And then on the free day, so tomorrow in the afternoon, you have to not work on analyses of data. You could be thinking about Bayesian psychometrics as we all do all the time, but you have to be divorced from your laptop at that particular moment. And so there's a variety of things to do, and we'll get together tomorrow morning uh, as a big group again, right back here at nine, just as we've done every morning we've gotten together at nine. And instead of lectures, we'll arrange who's doing what tomorrow. So um, that's tomorrow. So right after this talk, we'll break into work groups. Uh, and maybe depending on how the, we've, we've all had terrific questions, and that may occur here. And we may come on the work groups before lunch. Certainly after lunch, we'll break into work groups. We'll see how that goes. Um, and then pretty much the rest of the week is in your work group with the exception of these optional evening things like the career development one tonight, and then getting back together tomorrow at nine to talk about what are we doing on our free half day. All right, so that's all of my announcements. It's a great pleasure to introduce Dr. David Fardo from the University of Kentucky, who's gonna introduce the data and the data that we'll be working on in each of the work groups. So uh, this is a very different flavor of talk and Another thing to say there is congratulations, you all survived. <laughs> all of the didactics that are going to say like the word Bayes with math attached, so you, you did it. So, yay! <laughs> uh, yeah. Disclaimer, there will be no uh, use of the word Bayes or didactic uh, after the intro. Um, so so I, I want to say I'm uh, super grateful for being able to participate in this, this conference, this workshop. Um, it's it's unique. It's special on a whole different number of levels, as many of you readily know, and others are are, are learning. Um, I'm a biostatistician, statistical geneticist by trade training, and I've been very uh, welcomed into this community um, and very much appreciated. Uh, I have several goals for this talk. Um, so over the next two hours or 30 minutes or however long it takes. Um, uh, I'd like for uh, to accomplish a couple of things. One is just introduce um, ADNI as a general resource, um, drill down into what we're gonna be using in work groups um, later today and later this week, um, and, and discuss a little bit about um, uh, validity downstream. This is interactive. If you have questions during, please, um, please ask them. Um, there are a lot of people with a lot of um, ADNI expertise in this room, um, so hopefully we'll be able to, um, to answer those questions. Down the road, in five months or five years, you may be interested in using ADNI, and I'm hopeful that this uh, slideshow, this presentation, will help you jump up that learning curve um, downstream um, just to uh, make it a little bit easier. Uh, to garner. So Alzheimer's disease neuroimaging initiative, um, the study designs of ADNI, you saw a little bit in the last talk. Um, there, it's, it's pretty complex and comprehensive. You can see um, with this slide, uh, the different types of data that are available in different phases. You saw ADNI 1 um, and ADNI Go and ADNI 2 a bit in the last um, last presentation. Um, you can see here the different timing for those phases and the different collected um, data for those different phases. Oop. Can you see? Yeah. For those on Zoom, I'm trying to use my pointer. I, I'm wondering if, uh, if you can see this, but I'm trying to do this for you guys. Um, 
left to right are timing uh, from screening and baseline to uh, periodic visits. Uh, so on screening, there's demographics, um, some lab work, medication, uh, cognitive assessment, et cetera. And you can see in the legend, the different diagnostic categories um, from each stage. And I'll get into that in a little bit um, as well. So fairly comprehensive. Um, some of the discussion in the last talk was, was, was great um, about um, uh, learning effects and using either MCI conversions or potentially using cognitively normal folks um, who convert. It's very important that you understand the design and the limitations of ADNI. It's not a one size fits all uh, data set. The study that you have in mind, the hypothesis that you wanted to test necessarily was not, ADNI was not prospectively designed to test that. So it's important to understand that um, as you're doing your analyses. And um, I thought that was a great explanation um, at the end of, of, of Chun's talk uh, about um, uh, learning effects kind of getting um, uh, were not important for the question at hand. Um, this uh, slide, evolving study design, initially said statistical limitations. I thought that was harsh. And I realize that's not harsh, it's reality. Um, again, you need to understand the design in order to be able to do an analysis that makes um, sense and uh, you're able to uh, do any inference on it. Um, ADNI 1 started with uh, 200 cognitively normal, 400 uh, with mild cognitive impairment, and 200 mild AD research volunteers. Um, so those research volunteers were ascertained based on um, these, these diagnostic categories, these disease categories. Um, it got added on to by ADNI Go, and they introduced the early MCI group. Um, 200 subjects were recruited into that um, category, and 500 um, were rolled over from the cognitively normal and the MCI uh, ADNI 1 participants. 200 additional uh, mild AD were, um, were recruited. It gets complex quickly. ADNI 2 adds additional rollover, additional recruitment of cognitively normal, of early MCI, and they add late MCI. Uh, this is a good time to say this presentation has links to a lot of the resources that ADNI provides. So if you need to delve deeper into a question of interest that's pertinent for our uh, work groups later on this week or later in life, um, they're readily available. Alden has a question that I'll repeat. Yeah, this is just a simple language thing. What does rollover mean? Does it mean people from ADNI 1 are come back for ADNI 2? Yes. Thank you. I won't repeat it because you used a microphone. Thank you. Uh, so, so it is complex, and you can see in the um, rightmost column that the cognitively normal and MCI rollover from uh, into ADNI 2 were from ADNI 1, and there were some early MCI rollovers from ADNI Go. That's um, mentioned parenthetically. Again, this gets complicated quickly, and uh, understanding that is important, paramount, I would say, for whatever question that you're trying to answer. I believe Roy had a, com uh, a, a quote from, um, uh, from George Box uh, earlier. I, I think this is most often attributed to him that all models are wrong, uh, some are useful. That's very true. Um, whatever you're doing, whatever I'm doing is necessarily wrong at some level. The more you know, the more you realize what, uh, what limitations it has. Um, but if you get uh, a good enough, that's what um, really we're shooting for. ADNI 3 adds in a similar fashion. Uh, they're now recruiting for ADNI 4, from what I understand. Um, specifically uh, for uh, data um, acquisition, um, you guys know this, um, uh, that I'll say uh, theoretically, everyone has already um, gone through the ADNI data access and permission process. So you've seen this already. Um, but I'm putting up the links so that downstream, if you need them again, um, you can use them readily. So here, the access um, page, um, the login, um, screenshot, uh, it, a listing of all your different projects once you go into my account, um, the data use agreement, again, should be familiar. 
information is readily accessible. So you can play around on Lonnie. Um, that also has other studies besides ADNI um, and get a whole host of information. Most of the information you don't want or care about at all. So that's um, sometimes part of the, the challenge is narrowing down what you need. And what the organizers have nicely done for this um, workshop is provided what you need. Um, if you want some ancillary data, though, um, you'll be able to use um, these links to garner that. Um, you can get uh, descriptions of, of the data um, from a high uh, level um, with age categories, um, by diagnostic category, um, by gender, et cetera. There's a lot of pubs. There's almost 4,000 publications that um, have been generated from uh, using ADNI data. You can um, search on that left arrow. You can, a lot of the uh, uh, SciMCA organizers um, have published considerably in ADNI. We'll see a couple of those publications. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a phenomenal resource. Again, all those limitations um, as a caveat, uh, they make it very easy to get these data and hats off um, for generating that resource and keeping it going all these years, almost 20 years now. Uh, so this week, specifically um, what we're going to be doing for the rest of the week, um, we have uh, harmonized cognitive scores, um, among other data. And I've just highlighted um, three different data sets. This is the screen that you see when you're in the download area of Lonnie, uh, specifically in the study data area. On the left, you can see categories um, in green. Uh, again, it's it's sometimes a little difficult because there's so much to narrow down what you need. Um, don't be afraid. It, it gets a little bit easier. Um, these three that I've highlighted are from the ADSP Phenotype Harmonization Consortium, which is very well represented here. And what is uh, generated the um, uh, the harmonized and co-calibrated uh, executive functioning memory and language scores. Um, that we'll be using in work groups one through three, likely four as well. Um, the first paper, and you'll notice um, in gray, that this is a Friday Harbor 2011 workshop special issue. So this is something that was explicitly generated from this workshop, which I think is super cool. Uh, this was the, the memory ADNI MEM, the original uh, ADNI MEM uh, uh, harmonized uh, phenotype. Um, work group three is going to be working on um, that. Work group two has the um, executive functioning uh, metric, again, from Friday Harbor 2011. And work group one is using the um, uh, developed and validated language composite scores um, uh, that um, Sayun uh, um, authored. You see Joey and Laura and Elizabeth and Rich and Doug and uh, so so many names you should recognize um, from this room and and elsewhere um, that were uh, that are experts in the data that we're going to be using. Again, questions can be uh, answered if you have them. Um, you'll go a, a little bit deeper in work groups. Um, I'm not going to go through each of the three categories. I'll show you the data structure. You guys have access to the box um, where those are. Um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a, um, uh, an intro into how to uh, uh, get answers to the, the most likely questions that you have. Um, here are the data sets. There's a bonus data set that was not um, here at the time um, that I took this screenshot. Um, but you can see a, uh, that's, that's on imaging data. Um, that's ac accessible to you. It will require a little bit more of data munging if you're so if you're going to use that um, i'll leave it at that other than if you end up using it you should make the appropriate um, acknowledgements um, that are listed in that data set um, let's take a deeper dive into the code book so in the code book you'll see a uh, variable name and description um, these should be i say self-evident it's self-evident when things are well documented and this is well documented. So you can scroll down and see what um, each of these variable names um, represent. Um, and uh, we'll take a deeper dive into looking at the data for executive functioning um, in a bit. 
Um, but this should answer 90 plus percent of any questions that you have um, about the, the data. Um, each of the, the three domains has uh, three different uh, files, uh, CSV kind of a separated file, a DTA data file, and then a data dictionary. And the data dictionary, as you can see here, I'm sure everyone in the back can read the last columns, I would guess, not really. Um, even blowing it up, you can't see. Um, but again, the, typically the, the, the more documentation, the better. Um, and, and this is the case here. Um, you can see um, in that uh, uh, data dictionary uh, for each of the um, three domains is a pretty specifically um, documented uh, um, list for each of the, the variable names that we have access to. Uh, including recodings that were uh, done for Stata or M plus that has uh, limitations on the number of variables that can be entered. Um, yeah, each uh, the data dictionary has a key tab as well um, that's informative. Um, I'll get into actually I'll stop there. Questions about data structure before we jump in. I'll take a deeper dive into one, into executive functioning here shortly, just to, to look at the data. Um, yeah, go ahead, Tim. I just wanted to mention that there, there's also a searchable data dictionary for Abby overall online. So you can also go on track and search. Some of these are derived variables that the ID can put together to build the API. Um, but the data that comes right out of that, you can search the data. Thank you, Dr. Homan, um, who uh, uh, runs the ADSP Harmonization Consortium and is uh, very intimately involved um, in this. So uh, uh, use the search um, uh, functionality in ADNI um, if your question's not immediately answered in the documentation that um, uh, Joey and the, the, the rest of the, the, the data crew um, have put together. Um, again, ADNI is set up in general to be extraordinarily user-friendly. Um, it's one of the, the, the hat tips um, um, to that uh, uh, initiative. Other questions, comments? Thanks, Tim. You're gonna be going into this in a whole lot more detail in work groups very shortly, but this will hopefully um, accelerate um, your, your jaunt on that learning curve. Um, I'll give a hat tip. Um, we've had a lot of uh, chat GPT talk um, uh, this week already. I just uh, um, Googled exploratory data analysis using R um, as I was preparing this because there's always something new. Um, so if you already have your um, the way that you like to explore data, good for you. I like to kind of play around and see what's uh, newly available. And I've used some of those. I've used screenshots uh, and uh, opted going the screenshot rather than the live um, presentation route, um, uh, largely because we are on Zoom as well. Um, but I have um, a, a link here to Little Miss Data, who helped out, uh, uh, helped me at least learn some new packages in R. Um, a lot of you are new to R, or that's not your your primary statistical language, um, which is great. So hopefully you're getting some um, extra tools for your tool belt um, this week and um, uh, in this talk as well. So bringing in one of the data sets for, in this case, executive functioning uh, using a read R library and then exploring that. Um, so here I'm just using the view function, um, capital V, uh, to see the data. You, this is the same view that you will get if you open that CSV in Excel, uh, but now it's uh, actively in R which provides you a couple different extra things. You can notice that this data is in long format, which means that for each row is a visit. So each subject is going to have multiple different rows corresponding to different visits that they've had through their ADNI participation. Um, looking at the top one is ID two. And that person has had 11 different visits. Um, you can see that in the ID column um, and the visnum variable gets to M144 that 
due to good coding and good data documentation, I'm going to take a wild guess that that means it's month 144, right? So a lot of this is intuitive and thank you um, to those that, that, that make it that way. Um, Dplyr, uh, Tidyverse is um, a, uh, I say newer, it's, a, it's been around uh, eight years or so um, and people love it. Uh, the glimpse function in, in Dplyr uh, provides a look, a glimpse at the data structure that you have. So you can see here on the bottom left, what glimpse gets you, it lets us know immediately that we have 11,600 rows, which means there's 11,600 11, unique visits across these research volunteers, 61 columns. Um, that should comport with uh, the Excel file, um, uh, the CSV uh, file. And you can see here some descriptions that this is a coded as a double and a character and um, so, so on. And you can see a, a glimpse at that, um, that data without actively opening it. Um, similarly, the, the base summary function, summary of EXF um, gives us uh, an idea, uh, tells us about ID, the variable ID, the variable study, visnum, phase, et cetera, et cetera. We can see the, for the Ray VLT, um, some summary statistics here. We had, it's kind of nonsensical that the mean of something that's either one or two is 1.205. It, it, it tells us that I guess 20 and a half percent of those um, visits uh, were ones. Um, uh, but for age, um, we can see a little bit more um, uh, informative uh, information, including that there's somebody with age zero, which may be a Data is never perfect. I'll say that. Um, so there may be someone that's um, a newborn. <laughs> yeah, the, the newborn recruitment. That's add me four, right? The newborn recruitment. Um, kidding. Um, so so you see, uh, just again, a, a summary of the the data set that you've brought in. This is, uh, I think, uh, James mentioned yesterday. Any time that he gets a new data set, what do you do? You look at it. So um, this is a, a quick way of, of looking at it. Uh, a, another library that was new to me is skimmer and the skim function from that package uh, gives a host of other information and here uh, we can see just other descriptive information about the data set that's a good thing to pay attention to when you're first looking at any data that's new to you it may uncover coding errors it may uncover structure that you didn't um, know beforehand it may um, uh, as, as he mentioned yesterday gives you an idea of what those actual variables are, if they're constrained, if there's a, I think there was an MMSE max of 30, for example, that was discernible by an exploratory data analysis. This um, skim function um, shows a very briefly, palatably, a histogram of these variables and uh, 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 quantiles. Um, another fun uh, a library, VizDat, um, gives um, uh, visual representations of um, missingness um, or of the data type. Um, again, this is not intended for us to take a deep dive into this right now, but just to give you some tools in your tool belt um, to be able to explore on your own um, when you get into uh, work groups or um, for the future as well. Um, another fun one that was uh, completely new to me um, was a Data Explorer Library. Um, which calling the create report function from that library creates a report. Um, again, good, good, uh, good coding um, is, is extraordinarily useful. Um, this report uh, by default uh, provides a handful of things, basic statistics, um, structure, another missing data um, uh, and distributional um, snapshot, uh, correlation analysis, PCA, um, things that may give you some insights in the data um, that is new to you or, or you dived deeply and, and just want to uh, have some flavor of uh, visual representation. Um, this one's just a couple screenshots from that report. Um, you can kind of make some quick inferences. Um, looking at this uh, missing data profile, you see that there are certain um, items or certain uh, variables that have a similar missing data profile, which makes some certain, some sense if we uh, go into those variables and see that they're 
um, in, a, in the same battery, for example. Um, you can see histograms down at the bottom as well. Um, and I'll say this, if again, if you have your own EDA flavor, your own pipeline that you like, great. Maybe seeing these will further solidify the fact that you love your own EDA pipeline. If that's not the case for you, you might pick one or two things that are helpful downstream, again, either later this week or um, five years from now. Of course, five years from now, those, those tools will likely be very different. Um, inspect the idea. I got so tickled. So I, I was kind of like um, uh, uh, Alden and Brandon last night going up to James with a laptop. I'm like, let's, uh, how do we uh, change this, um, this function? Um, so I got a little carried away with my EDA. Um, but inspect DF was super cool. Um, uh, just a different way to look at um, uh, the data here. You see data types and, and missing this uh, in a different uh, pre uh, presentation. Um, but uh, again, you can glean uh, important information about your data set in this way. With Inspect DF, you can also compare different data sets. So um, I decided at this point to um, cut up the executive functioning data set by um, uh, disease uh, category. Uh, um, and so uh, the subgroups were the normal uh, cognition, MCI, and AD. And I did that. Um, I guess you might need the the tidyverse um dpire this might be in dpire but regardless um i, I separated those and, and then compared the missingness profiles of the uh, normal um folks and then the ad subjects and again just exploring um, but i can maybe make some uh preliminary inferences about um what's what here uh, the normals are in red and the ADs are in blue. Um, interesting. AD, DX, Viz, there's a lot more missingness for normals um, than ADs. Um, in this whole group, there's a lot more uh, normals. Uh, there's a lot more missingness in the ADs than in the normals. That may or may not be important, um, but it's easy to visualize. Um, because we're interested in uh, uh, a lot of the time, like our last talk of uh, longitudinal um, uh, uh, inference analyses, uh, I made some very quick spaghetti plots with ggplot. Um, and all these are doing separated by AD, MCI, and normal cognition. And just for a subset of folks, because if I were to do all 11,000 visits, this would crash or at least become unreadable. Um, but what these plots are, are um, over uh, by age, um, people's executive functioning, um, uh, harmonized executive functioning um, over age by person and categorized by um, a diagnostic category, AD, MCI, and normal. And we can see um, I fairly readily the increase um, by um, from AD to MCI to normal, I guess we flip flop that, we'd see a decrease. Um, again, ways to explore your data. Um, and these are the data that are available to us this week. Um, you'll have a whole lot more to come. The info share that you guys have already been on in box, I'll go over that um, uh, quickly. Uh, three main folders, data, our tutorial, which Sam um, uh, did yesterday, which was uh, great. Uh, and then talks uh, in the data folder, there's a subfolder papers and resources. Um, I guess before I get into that, these are all the data sets that I showed before. There's a, a couple bonus ones that you can look into um, that I haven't talked about, um, but if they're uh, of use, then, then absolutely um, take advantage of that. Um, in the paper and resources subfolder, there is a readme file that I highly recommend you do, readme. Um, and it's very well laid out. Again, like data documentation is fantastic. Um, and the, the resource documentation is uh, fantastic. And here you see within the, the documents that are shared, a high view of what they are. Um, so 002, is the McCurgy et al. paper, Cognitive Domain Harmonization and Co-Calibration uh, in Neuropsychology, uh, and talks about the workflow 
for co-calibrating cognitive tests, et cetera, et cetera, across different studies um, here, including ADNI, um, but also with uh, Ross Map uh, and ACT uh, as well. Um, I'll go into this and um, the, very briefly, um, the Crane et al. Uh, 2012 paper um, that was the original uh, ADNI MEM that came from this, this conference. Um, in that abstract, um, I, I actually will read this verbatim. Um, our primary goal was to develop and evaluate the validity of psychometrically sophisticated memory composite score from ADNI, close to verbatim. Um, we compared our memory score to a variety of other scores. And um, here's how we tried to address validity. Um, first, uh, tried to detect change over time by diagnostic group. This is important parenthetically. Why by diagnostic group? Because this is ADNI data and you need to respect the fact that subjects were ascertained based on diagnostic group. Um, so detect change over time in that memory score and did that comport with, um, with groups? Predict conversion to, from MCI to AD, um, which we saw a bit about um, uh, last hour. And correlate MRI metrics that are known to be related to memory with the memory score, and then contrast rates of decline between those with uh, the, those without AD, those that are cognitively normal in MCI, with and without the uh, CSF-based AD signature. So this is a an example of what was um, the approach taken to um, to show validity of a metric, and, and there are a lot of folks in this room that are uh, uh, better suited to, to go into those weeds, um, but this is a, a, a glimpse there. Questions on this, or do you, Paul, do you wanna say anything else on, on validity? Okay. Um, extra slides. Um, we have a, um, this is actually one of the, the resources in box, the um, 004 factor models for ADNI data. And these are going to reflect or show what the, the models uh, that, um, that those initial ADNI scores, um, how they were developed. Um, in the language group, the working group one, um, here are all of the, um, or a snapshot of the, the different um, items, uh, some coming from ADAS-COG or BNT or MMSE and MOCA. Um, and here, this is a single factor uh, model that uses um, um, all of the items that are pointed to. We've seen a lot of different model structure diagrams. And so this is a model structure diagram um, showing what the original, this is the original um, uh, ADNI language um, um, score. Similarly for executive functioning, here are the items um, that were uh, used for executive functioning. Um, and including their secondary structure. This, again, this, this, these slides are in a, um, a separate uh, PowerPoint in our box folder. Um, and this shows a bifactor model that shows, for example, uh, digit span backward total corrected and digit span forward total correct um, were uh, uh, comprised um, a secondary structure F2 and then four other um, items were, were um, had a secondary structure. Um, trails A, trails B, um, digit symbol total correct, and number cancellation task from ADESCOG. Similarly for the um, memory uh, group, uh, working group three, um, here's the battery. We can see um, to expect a bifactor model is coming. Um, with three different um, uh, secondary um, uh, structures, um, and it's it's laid out like that. So I believe, yes, memory and SEs uh, also come from this model. Uh, SEs are available in the data that uh, are provided. Those are from uh, an updated model that has been harmonized and co-calibrated with additional data over ADNI's um, um, extensions. I'll also say this, ADNI's evolved over time as have neuropsych batteries. That's another thing that's important to keep in mind. The bonus data set is uh, some imaging data. Uh, imaging technologies has, have evolved over time. Uh, the beginning of ADNI to now is a, uh, about 20 years. Those things have changed. So it's important to recognize that um, some of the same measures 
are not really necessarily measuring exactly the same thing. Um, so I'll open it to questions.